begin by congratulating Krista. You've done a fantastic job bringing together a variety of people in this room. And it's just, um, I watched in the session I was um, doing the Q&A on and, and co-sharing with Mark. Everybody was awake. <laughs> it's really amazing. Anyway, I'd like to talk about some of the efforts that we have made um, to spread the message about colorectal cancer prevention through the Prevent Cancer Foundation and our partners. Um, we reach the people through many different vehicles, and we talk about educating the public, but the public really takes many forms. There's the general public, which we go to through, you just heard about the super colon exhibit, more about that in a minute, our buddy bracelet campaign, our PSA campaign, and our Prevent Cancer website. We also think it's really important to work with media. They are a wonderful way to get your message out, and they just uh, multi they are a multiplier effect. Um, we work with medical providers. We educate medical providers through a conference we have called the National Dialogue for Action to Increase Colorectal Cancer Screening, and also educate them at the local level, um, at the state level, and also in Indian and uh, American Indian and Alaska Native tribes through individual dialogues for action, which have been partially supported by the CDC. I also want to mention before I move on that advocacy is a very important part of what we do, and it is really important to educate our legislators and other people who work in the government that are in a position to make an, a, a real difference in what gets covered, for example, in terms of colorectal cancer. Now. Um, I think this is not my original, this is not the, this is not the slides in the order I sent them finally, but I'll go ahead with this. Um, I mentioned that I would be talking about the supercolon. The supercolon exhibit crisscrosses the nation. We have moved beyond March, which our foundation actually took the lead in 1999, worked with members of Congress on both the House and Senate side, as well as the administration, and we were successful in getting official proclamations from the House of Representatives, the Senate, and President Clinton in that year, in our first uh, National Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, with the slogan, Preventable, Treatable, Beatable, was launched in March 2000. And it was just wonderful serendipity that Katie chose March 2000 to have her um, colonoscopy on television. Last month, well, sorry about that. that they've gotten me off. But anyway, the other, the other educational initiatives we do, we started, we had the original uh, rubber bracelet our blue bracelet called the buddy bracelet. The idea is it's a message that can be viral. You wear this, you get your colonoscopy, and then you pass it along to someone else who, um, who then can wear the, wear the bracelet and be screened. Um, the idea is behavior is contagious. It builds on the theory that Malcolm Gladwell wrote about so well in The Tipping Point, which I'm sure all of you know. We have a public, a public service campaign, and we feel if people are old enough to remember Elvis Presley, then they're old enough to need a, a colonoscopy, or to get screened at least for colon cancer. So we distribute this all over the place, and then back in March it found a home and billboards and um, also in, and in print media nationally. We have several initiatives on our website. We have a YouTube, you have to, have, you have to be on YouTube these days. Um, we have a Facebook fan page. And every week on our website, we have a personal story about someone who's had to deal with colorectal cancer. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit now about the medical providers and how we educate them through the National Dialogue for Action. We held the first one of those meetings in 1999, and the goal was really to, get, to bring together um, a variety of constituencies. We wanted colorectal cancer to become part of a comprehensive and coordinated cancer prevention program. And we wanted to provide an impetus for action. We wanted each meeting to have a tangible outcome. People could go back and talk to their own constituents, and they would um, motivate them to take actions to increase colorectal cancer screening. The goals for, 1990, for 2009, which were just established at the um, most recent meeting at the beginning of April were to explore the benefits of integrating colorectal cancer screening with other preventive services, highlight specific techniques and approaches, explore the potential for preventive services, exchange ideas and strategies for increasing colorectal cancer screening with a diversity of colleagues. And again, this meeting draws from primary care providers, from 
gastroenterologists, uh, other academic um, medical providers, as well as nurse practitioners and industry patients, patient advocates, uh, the radiology community. So we get a broad variety of constituents represented in the meeting who can go back to their communities and in turn educate um, their constituents. And again, the final thing was to assess the impact of health care reform, which is a phrase that is on everybody's tongue these days in the U.S. Uh, we all know it's coming and we want it to be done right. So uh, we want to make colorectal cancer screening a very important part of health care reform. As I mentioned with uh, funding from the CDC, we have conducted dialogues for action in several states. Uh, they're, they're the ones that are in color on this, on this map. And we have also held a number of dialogue, dialogues for action for a very underserved population, and those are American Indian and Alaska Natives. And we have brought, we've created teams from these 10 different groups that you see here, and have brought them together and given them funding to develop their own colorectal cancer action plan. Again, we support exactly what Mark said. The key to success is partnerships. We started with 13 partners back in 1999, and that has now grown to 57 partners. Um, every, I don't think I need to tell you, any, every coalition has more clout when it is a group of organizations doing the same thing than when one organization is trying to do something just by itself. It brings multiple resources, but also multiple perspectives that will, in fact, bring, around, bring about change. And there's a shared goal among the varied groups. Advocacy, patient organizations, professional societies, the public health community, and academic health providers. It is my pleasure to have the chance to speak to you, and I thank you very much for your attention.